We're cycles like when I we talk about bull bear cycles in Bitcoin, it's four years. Um, we've had two really prominent cycles, so everyone's looking back and going, "Well, we're going to end maybe end of this year. And we're going to have another pullback of eighty five percent over a year, and then we'll have another, you know, four year cycle." And I'm saying, I don't think that's going to happen. And I think that um, if given that's the case, well, if that's a that's those fair bear cycles of you know bull bear cycles of four years have gone um then we're just going to have we'll, we'll go up and down up and down um, whether you call them bull bear cycles but they're not four years in cycles this is like a you know price discovery as the thing ramps up um and like i mean i have these charts up every day and seriously we've got 12 and a half years of these charts you know it's it's carving out an adoption s curve three percent of the world has bitcoin um and it's growing at a rate of 100 percent per annum so be six percent in a year six percent of the world population having exposure and then 12 and a half 12 percent you know and so forth so um it sounds ridiculous right it sounds ridiculous that we won't have us dollars in 10 years but um i, I remember doing this thing in 2016 um and tracking the rate of growth we had six years, six or seven years at that point. And I said, looks like in nine years, um, half of the world will be using Bitcoin. And that's actually continued to be on track. So um, things change very quickly when we're talking about exponential change. So I think there's a fair shot that the new unit account may be Bitcoin. Um, sounds ridiculous when the only 3% of the world's using it. But remember, it's going to be 6% and 12% in two years. And then it's going to look a lot more obvious. Um, and so yeah the unit if the unit account changes and yeah that's that's a <laughs> a lot of things change um so that's what i'm saying that's fascinating i love that so and you think that could play out like in the next what 10 years then 10 years in the us dollar just does it i mean it obviously will still exist in some way but bitcoin will take over do you think america would put it on its reserves or yeah, I don't. I don't really know. Uh, I'm just tracking the rate of growth of this thing and the valuation. I don't know whether or not nation states are able to like m mitigate its rise. Um, I I kind of think that like it doesn't really make sense for um, nation state currencies to exist as they have been in the past, um, being fiat, um, sovereign issued. Um, demanding their citizens to um, hold it or spend with it. Um, not in a digital age, not when like more and more of the population are um, digitally mobile, can work anywhere in the world, um, can travel anywhere in the world, and um, and they wanna they want a borderless currency. So, you know, anyone who's traveled a bit has noticed that, you know, there's this new movement of mainly millennials and younger um, you know digital nomading as you, they speak well they work online and they they go to places in the world that have better you know value for living and um i've observed that most of them are very early in in crypto because that's exactly what they need a, a store of value that is in the cloud that like you know it's not not in a bank because banks don't work internationally anyone who's traveled um notices that they're, they're very pro crypto and it actually works for a digital life and um, as more and more people move into the digital realm you see this with nfts as well like more and more real world stuff is being um, coexisted and digitized um yeah I, i'm looking at it now and looking at nation state currencies and going you know it might not be obvious now but wait 10 years and you're starting to realize that it's starting to look very very archaic and it looks like a copper silver and gold coins being traded versus you know something that is um very native to um you know effectively what runs global commerce um now which is all digital so I don't see it as a big leap. Maybe I live in the future a bit, but I'm looking at what we've got now and what we've got right now developing. And it's just the future's here. It's just taking time to spread and it's spreading very quickly. Before we continue, help us clicking that YouTube like button and subscribe now to our channel. This shows the algorithm that you valued this information. And it helps us spread that message. Sharing is caring. And now let's continue. 
I love it. Okay. Well, so what are your final thoughts or something that you're going to be watching for right now as we head into the end of the year? End of the year. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I'm just really interested to see who the next buyers are. So you've got like, we've had the first bunch of um, corporates that have bought in and um, we haven't had a really big, like, um, you know, Fortune 20, like company, like come in. Um so I'm, I'm I'm looking for that. I'm also looking for the first um, large sort of sovereign um, wealth fund to buy in. Um, we've already seen El Salvador um, get exposure with their their um, so a nation state has bought in, but like some of the big guys, you know, with trillion trillion dollars of like um, wealth to 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 invest. Um, looking for that kind of stuff, and also interested to see what happens with the hedge fund world, whether or not they sell off um, to you know publish their 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 results, you know, their their earnings. I don't know. So I'm I'm really just really going into the first quarter like who's buying who's selling um and yeah so that that's my that's what i'm thinking um yeah like this as things go on we go from the early buyers that are small to bigger buyers and then the, you had the hedge funds you had the you know the um the very notable um you know the bridgewaters of this world um blackrock they they're starting to validate it and so we're going bigger and bigger and waiting for the big announcements from, you know, sovereign wealth funds um, and, and banks holding it as an asset backing. Um, so that kind of thing of bringing um, more and more legitimacy into it. Just, you know, every sort of quarter we see something new. We just had the ETFs. So that was something we were watching for the third or fourth quarter of this year. And it, it came through. Um, also spot ETFs as well, whether or not they'll be approved. Um, so, yeah, it's just, it's nice. It's just watching this tiny asset class get mature and become a full, full blown um, macro asset with all of its sophistications. Do you want to know one thing about crypto? I made over 3000% in profit in a few weeks. Fact is, the traditional financial system, the traditional money system makes you poor, not rich. If you want to earn 500,000, 1 million dollar, you have to wait until you're 50, 60, 70 in the traditional financial system and you probably will still be broke and you will be old. This is not a sexy combination as you can imagine. But the question is, how can you start in crypto and make these profits? Where to invest? Where to start? My name is Gunnar and I'm from Germany as you can hear and things are a little bit different in Germany. More about that later on. The fact is, there are lots of different cryptocurrencies. It's a gigantic universe where beginners and professionals get easily lost. But there is light at the end of the tunnel. There are seven key steps you need to follow to become successful in this market. You have to know them and if you fail one of them, it's literally impossible to succeed in this market. Just an example, one of the key points is your exchange and one of the biggest are for example Binance and Coinbase. These are trusted and well-established exchanges, but, and this is a big but, you won't find the super profitable coins on those exchanges. The unknown super profitable coins that get gigantic profits are not traded on those kind of exchanges. They are traded on much smaller insider platforms that are barely known. And I can tell you what those super secret exchanges are and why they are so profitable. And another super important thing are the right information sources. The point is, the internet is gigantic. There are hundreds and hundreds of YouTube channels, blogs, pages and much, much more. And there are also market makers and influencers. For example, Elon Musk, he is not a crypto guy, but the moment he recommended Dogecoin, it went through the roof, to the moon, so to say. But why did he recommend it? Where did he hear it from? He didn't hear it from newspapers. And believe me, he is listening to someone. But you have to know who and you have to react before he is reacting. This is really, really important. And these are only two of the seven steps you have to follow in order to be successful in crypto. And if you want to know all of these steps in much more detail, and if you want to have a comprehensive checklist, Here's what you should do. There is a link below this video. Click on this link and you will get the opportunity to subscribe to my channel. Click on the link and you will see a video where I explain the next steps. So see you soon. Click on the link now. I'll see you there.